Warning, the following may contain griffins. Join fantasy authors Phil Tucker, Tamandra Whitecastle, David Benham, Benedict Patrick, and Josiah Bancroft as they roll dice and take on the bad guys in a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Five authors, five worlds, one adventure. It's time to get critic faced. So we're going to uh, head inside the uh, the north wing now. Uh, as you step in through the the door to to the north wing, um, it, it opens up almost immediately in, into the one room that, that takes up the the entire ground floor of the wing. Now, just as you as you sort of step inside, you do notice there are two staircases, uh, both to your left and right, that, that run upstairs into the belfry. Uh, that's over this part uh, of the. Uh, the Abbey. Uh, however, we're entering into the main hall. So gentle sounding uh, music is trickling down from above, uh, played on a, a single stringed instrument somewhere above you. You can't see who's playing it um, up um, uh, above the main hall somewhere. So this is one large 50 foot square room. It's got arched leaded glass windows. Uh, there's a cauldron sitting uh, on an iron rack above a fire and a hearth. Uh, on the fireplace hangs a golden disc which uh, has the symbol of the rising sun engraved into it. The symbol uh, of the Morning Lord. Um, so you've got the, your wooden uh, staircases, and I, I got it wrong, sorry. One of them is, is heading up to the upper level. There's actually another staircase heading uh, down into darkness. Um, so there are several chairs surrounding a, a wooden table uh, that's, that stretches the, the, the length of the room, you know, like banquet table uh, style. Um, the sort of wooden dishware, golden candelabras uh, arranged on the table. Uh, and standing uh, behind the table is a young woman with alabaster skin, and she's dressed in a torn and soiled red gown. Um, her auburn hair is neatly bundled so as not to touch her soft shoulders. She seems lost in her own thoughts. Uh, and taking her hand is a handsome young man in, in a brown monk's robe. And he's just holding her hand gently. There's a, a painted wooden uh, holy symbol of the morning lord hanging from a chain around uh, his neck. Uh, and he moves uh, with the grace uh, of a saint. Uh, and, and as you come in, um, you can overhear him uh, speaking to her. And he says, Vasil, Vasil, sorry, Vasilka, this you eat when you first begin eating. Work from the outside and take the, the cutlery on the outside and work your way inwards as the meal progresses. And, and then uh, as you enter into the room, uh, he looks up and, and, and sees you and he says, Ah, it appears that our guests have arrived. And uh, the young woman beside him, uh, presumably Vasilka, uh, she clutches her hands uh, to her, her chest uh, and her, her face goes from expressionless into a, a closed, uh, pleasant smile looking at you all. Detect good and evil by coming through the door? Yes. I, yep. It's a, yes. So, uh, guys, yet again, uh, uh, Bernard is hit with a celestial sledgehammer uh, and... and uh, I brace... Yeah, uh, uh, you do brace, but you still stumble to your knees. Um, it is the abbot. Uh, the abbot uh, is uh, definitely of celestial origin. Who's uh, hungry? And, and in fact, as you uh, as you do that, you see a, a frown cross his face, uh, and um, he he gracefully moves uh, around the table uh, to, towards you but Bernard he's fixing you uh, with a look and, and he waves his hand uh, in the air and he says I would ask you to not do anything like that again in my presence oh absolutely may the blessings of the morning lord protect each and every one of us from evil and good and I cast protection from evil and good on myself how long does that take protection from good and evil it's one action. It's up to 10 minutes, and it protects me from celestials. Uh, creatures, they have disadvantage on attack rolls against me. They, I can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Um, so he uh, raises an eyebrow uh, uh, as you do that, 
Um, <laughs> I'm and, making friends. And, and clutches the uh, his pendant Celestial and uh, nods at you as you do so. And, and, he, and he again waves his hand in your direction uh, and he says, that will not be necessary here. We are all friends uh, in the eyes of the Morning Lord. Aye, indeed. I can climb back up to my feet. How can I help you today on your visit to my abbey? We're here to kill Strahd, and we want to find Irena. I <laughs> <laughs> rest in the group convulses. Uh, <laughs> all the barbarian. You know, just we, cut we right had to the two chain. bottles of wine, and 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 the fool drank half of each. <laughs> so that's why he's just. Um, so, at Kellen's mention of killing Strad, um, you see the abbot's frown deepen further, and he. Uh, raises his fingers to the bridge of his nose and pinches them and closes his eyes uh, and he says I am, I must confess getting rather tired of this old argument Uh, opens his eyes again and looks at you and says I do understand the frustration that seems to afflict so many people there is no doubt that Strad von Sarovich is an evil upon this land however it has long since been proven that trying to deal with this evil through violence through violence will not solve anything. Cast out your violent tendencies. Instead, we will solve the problems of Barovia in a peaceful manner. Free love. This is this is what I always say. Yes, if you if you just love a little more and wear a little less, you can solve almost any problem. We intend to kill him with kindness. <laughs> <laughs> and and so if, if we don't have to kill him, but what do we have to do to rid this land of his great evil? And um, and he 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 um, says, Strad, we must get. Find the reason behind the evil. Strad is a man, is a being with a broken heart. The breaking of his heart through the loss of his love is what has led him down this evil path that has been inflicted upon Barovia for generations. Mm. Instead of trying to fight that which cannot be fought, it is my goal to heal the wound that inflicts this land. Do you yes, happen to know of well. a wizard's tower on a lake? <laughs> okay, I push Kelly aside. <laughs> what we actually yeah. want to say. We actually want weird, to know weird. the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> is, um, we're looking for, uh, speaking of uh, Strahd's broken heart. He has set his eye upon a young maiden of Barovia, a friend of ours who we lost uh, recently and who has last been seen uh, in... No, was she in the Abbey? No, she was making her way towards the Abbey. Have you seen our friend, Irina? I forgot her last name. Is it Ramovich? Is that right? I don't know. Blagovich. <laughs> no. um, the Burgomaster's daughter. Uh, and and he, he said, I know no one of that name. Unless, of course, it is Mistress uh, Davenir's ward. Well, maybe she is. Could we speak to the ward? Uh, Mistress Davenir um, and her ward are, are currently staying in my guest quarters um, above the, the eastern wing of... The Abbey. I could certainly send to them to see if they were interested in an audience with you. That would be great. Eastern Wing, that's a bit, you know, we've we've seen that place. It's not very nice of you. I understand um, how the Bellevues can seem uh, unusual to outsiders. Uh, Unfortunately, that is where all the living quarters of the Abbey are. I have situated them up uh, above where the Bellevues live, so they are quite far removed from the unusual tendencies of some of that family. Who you are in the process of curing, of course. Of course, yes. 
Yes. And are, are they afflicted with uh, Strahd's, uh, you know, uh, influence? Uh, the Bellevues? Yes. Yes, I believe that their original contamination does stem from Strad's uh, evil, the evil that he has mm-hmm. been forced, to, the evil path he's been forced upon. So, so the, but I they, have made certain they, changes to them. So they were, they were vampires, right? Oh, no, no, nothing yeah. of the sort, of course. Oh, okay. Um, what changes did you make to them? I have made different changes depending on their individual needs and desires. Oh, um, so, so one of them said, I need a frog foot, and you said, here's a frog foot? That is a very short version of the story, but yes, <laughs> they seem to be very happy with their... Frog feet. The, the, the frog, well, just the one. <laughs> the one's sort of a crow foot, you know, so in case you want to scratch something and splash with the other, I'm sure that's very useful. Bernard steps forward with his holy symbol and says, I am a paladin of the Morning Lord. You are clearly more than you seem to be, Abbot. Who are you? What are you? And how did you come to Barovia? I am willing to only discuss my role as a simple servant of the Morning Lord, looking to solve the ills of this poor land. However, as you have so astutely noticed, I am better than most who walk through this land and Thus, I have managed to find a better way to solve these problems. Mm. Have you been in Barovia long? For what many of you would consider many lifetimes, yes. And Strad leaves you alone? I have spoken with him on occasions, but he is willing to realize that a war between us would not be for the benefit of, of anyone in this land. Can we borrow your holy symbol? No, you may not. Would you like a barbarian? Does he have any Bellevue <laughs> in his family tree? Uh, yes, a little bit, I think. I think, uh, yes. I smell like an animal. Are, yes, yes, a bit of a donkey in him. I am noticing many similarities. Tell me, friend Kellen, <laughs> are you happy with how you look at the moment? <laughs> Would you like a frog booty? That's kind of the creepiest question I've ever heard. And I've heard a lot of creepy questions in Barovia. You've asked a few, yes. Yeah, he's asked many of them. Do consider, <laughs> Kellen, if you feel there's any way that you feel that... I have a look at the Bellevues as you walk around, and they are happy. Would you like quite, some of that? Quite, quite mad, I will grant you, but very happy with themselves. Do you do anything with like um, sort of um, I don't want to say guts, but let's say an expansion of one's middle sort of area? If you are trying to say that you would rather replace your stomach area with that of a pig, um, I have to say that um, I have done that once before. Zigfric's uh, great grandmother, I believe, uh, was much happier um, with that. Uh, no, no, that's not what I was saying at all. I was saying, you know, perhaps like the the the, the, the uh, ab muscles of a you know twenty four year old legionnaire, sort of just a, a a thin trail of hair and a, and a, and a perfectly dimpled navel, that sort you, of thing. Do you <laughs> have, I, I do you have any legionnaire abdomen muscles with you? <laughs> Why? Uh, no, no. I left Doesn't home. he ask that of everybody? <laughs> Um, Abbot, how do you know that these Bellevues are happy? When we spoke with Zygric and the rest, they seemed barely able to communicate and ashamed of themselves. And they seem trapped in this abbey by these changes. Would they not be happier if they were not more normal in appearance and go forth to lead their own lives as they saw fit? This is also what I first thought when I came across the family. However... Over time, I have come to realize through discussion with them and through taking the time to delve deep into their minds that they wished for another route uh, when considering their appearance. I have done much work with their bodies to improve them and to give them what they wanted. Unfortunately, 
Their minds still elude me, but it is a conundrum I, I continue to work upon. Does he does have, a have a beard? No, he has clean shaven. Does does a does a Strad's curse was responsible for breaking their minds? I believe it was responsible for the original affliction, which I am still working to cure. What was the original affliction? Um, madness, a- absolute madness. Wow. What was the name of that house that we first? went into when we arrived at Barovia. Who owned that house? It wasn't the Bellevue house, was it? Durst. No, it was a, uh, the, yes, the Durst. The Durst uh, place on Earth. No, uh, okay, come on, the puns must have been enough to remind you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, if you if we could see you, if we could see the ward. Um, yes, I will, the lady. I will, um, I will send for her. And Is she, she a Vistani lady? A uh, Vistana? Uh, mistress, mistress, mistress Davenir uh, is, yes. as a matter of fact, yes. Oh, I tend to also be, as the abbot's talking, mm-hmm. I'm going to be uh, kind of peeking around to see mm-hmm. if I see any sort of book with a symbol of the Morning Lord. Okay, do you want to take a perception check? Not really, but I will. <laughs> uh, 14. Okay, so you uh, don't see any uh, books in particular that grab your eye. Um, you do notice the, the gold Morning Lord disc that's hanging from the, the wall above the fireplace. Um, uh, it's made of solid gold. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know it, it would be worth a considerable amount of money. Um, uh, also, the, the actual can- the candelabras, the four candelabras that are, are on the tabletop, um, are also solid gold. Um, so that's certainly what catches your eye. Um, however, you're, you also notice, uh, uh Vasilka, um, the, the girl that the abbot uh, was uh, speaking to uh, when you come in. Um, you notice that, uh, her skin is covered in a, a fine uh, powder. Uh, and as you, you move around the room uh, investigating it, as you get closer to her, you realize, um, that you can see seams, uh, in her skin. Um, uh, where uh, stitching uh, has taken place on, on many different parts of her body. Uh, she, Ew. by the way, uh, continues to to stare at you with this uh, smile on her face as she clutches her hands to her chest. Like Frankenstein stitches, body parts put together? Well, I mean, uh, potentially. <laughs> she, have we asked her how she feels about this whole experience? I mean, can we, can we, can we yeah. say... Hello. Hey, ma- madam, uh, I have to say I have seen some rare beauties and yours is one of the finest. Uh, I, w- how have you enjoyed your stay here in <clears throat> the Abbey? So uh, Vasilka um, so nods her head at you and, and raises her eyebrows and continues to one, smile. One and, and the <laughs> abbot turns and says, Vasilka uh, does not speak yet. Ah, oh, well, that's... Uh, did uh, has she been a guest here long, or did you happen to create her? Oh, she is of my own creation. Yes. Oh, well, that's very open of you. Yes. Well, you have seen what I've achieved with the Bellevue family. Certainly, something like Facilca is not beyond my powers if I am able to do such. And why are why are we creating Facilcas again? Ah. Well, if you recall. It is my plan to heal Strad's broken heart. Oh, by providing him with a perfect Vasilka. Uh, I can see why the Morning Lord chose you, Bernard. I, I'm still trying to figure that one out myself, but I don't understand why the Morning Lord would... Where did you get the Vasilka parts? Uh, certain, the, uh, certain sacrifices had to be made. No lives were taken who, in the creation. Who's, who's the doing the sacrifice? Vasilka. Um, no lives were taken. Do not worry. This is all part. This is all part of the Morning Lord's plan. And once emphasis on part. Once, <laughs> once I have created someone that Strad can truly love again, like he did his Tatiana all those years ago, then the wounds of Barovia will be healed. <laughs> is that not right? Facility? No, and no, it's he, not. No, because first of all, Strad, Strad is a very intense person with 
very strong passions. Mm -hmm. And Vasilka here is kind of a blank canvas. She, I don't think she would, you know, as the kids say these days, I don't think she would do it for him. I think he would, he needs Tatiana's, you know, je ne sais quoi to really get his undead blood pumping. I, I think you're trying to create a, a version that will never draw more than his amusement. And in the meantime, you, you were doing very un, un morning lord kind of things. I mean, where did you get the head? I'm sure the owner of that one probably misses it. No, the owner of the head had no further use as far as it. Well, yes, the, the head. What, had she died of consumption? I cannot recall well, exactly what it was she had passed away with, but we, we we dealt with the matter. It is all sorted. Of course, Vasilka, as you see her now, is not a bride worthy of Strad. Not yet. She remains a work in progress. And something that I am happy to slowly work towards. So you, you harvest these parts right. from the dead after, with the permission of the family relatives, is what you're telling me. I see. And, and then so, teach them table manners. What's that? Well, yes, table and then manners. Teach them table manners. Strad lives in a castle. He is royalty, of course. Vasilka will have to be able to eat with him. But yeah, I'm sorry, you didn't answer my question. So all the body parts, the body parts came from people who had died natural causes or deaths that you were not involved with, and then you got the pieces with the permission of the family members. Is that right? That all sounds correct. Yes. That all sounds correct, or it is correct. No, I have much to do with Vasilka. Okay, I could throw out a zone of truth spell. And we could really get to it. But this is kind of an important thing. Are you taking these Vasilka parts in a manner that the Morning Lord would approve of? Or are you being a little proactive about it for the greater good? You have sensed me, Bernard. You know that I am more than human. Yeah, all, so of, all of my actions are done with the Morning Lord's blessing. Mm. Mm. And I will grow quick to anger if you continue to question me along these lines further. Something I would like to say that I am not with him, and uh, we are very happy to be here uh, with your beautiful uh, tennis ball wife. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, she, she, uh, she's a lovely quilt. I'm sure that Strad will love her. Can we see the ward now, and will you shut up? Don't no. I'm a paladin of the morning lord, and we you have a morning lord person here who is Obviously, harvesting parts illegally well, in, a, in some of those crazy oh, have a past, you know. I mean, we've I, I'm... John, can I'm Master afraid I... Sonna, can Master Sonna brandish the sun sword and see how uh, the abbot reacts? I could probably golf clap. Well, um, I could to be subtly short. That's good already. Uh, okay. Um, okay. You don't need to I point it at him. You can just like, kind of so like hey. unsheath it. Well, I yeah. Unsheath like, it. Hey, look! I have it. a sun sword. It's, it's a massive bolt of sun. <laughs> so, sorry, Master Sonna, what's happening? She's cutting his head know. off with a sun blade. Hello, Master Sonna, what's happening? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I I grab the hilt of my sunblade. So as soon as you grab the hilt, uh, you can uh, feel uh, an immense amount of concern coming from your blade. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm. Maybe it Sorry. ends there. I, I feel that my blade isn't uh, willing to do this. No, I think it's concerned about the situation, not about being drawn. It's like <laughs> sketchy Abbott. Sketchy Abbott vibes. <laughs> It was, yes, this is a sketchy ha abbot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, he's also a celestial being. Yes. Celestial beings can fall. They can be a fallen celestial being that's gone astray and been perverted by the land of Barovia into yes. some sort of twisted solution to a problem that only makes everything worse for everybody in the long run. Definitely I, I, a thing. I, I understand your, 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 your difficulty. Like, if we had no other mission, Bernard, I would stand by your side and uh, say oh, that this perversion cannot. I can't be believe you're adored. turning me. You're, you're 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 turning tail and fleeing. But our mission is foremost to retrieve Irina if we can, 
And the information that we've just received from this uh, Abbott is that indeed we need to mend Strad's heart in order to free this whole country. That's, that's his twisted logic. I don't, it's like a sieve. It doesn't hold Look, water. You're the one who asked what was in the sausage and now you're sad to know the truth. I'm sorry. Yes, it's a, it's a sausage bride. Let's just let that go and go meet the ward. I can't. I'm a paladin of the morning, Lord. This is no, an just... abbot of the morning, Lord, doing things in the morning, Lord's name, which are completely against his nature. And if I'm to remain a paladin and not just some buff- sort of terrible fighter person who has no religious aspirations, I have to stand up in this moment, in this place, with all this religious paraphernalia, which is actually quite important to me. Like this, this is one of those places where I'm between a rock and a symbol of the morning, Lord. You can understand that even if you don't feel it. I I, I I would just not like to die. That's well, sort of all right. I'm I'm gonna press the issue yes. because I'm I am actually a paladin of the morning lord. Yes. I turned the habit. Like, we're almost done. I yes. turn back to you guys. Uh, I am a, I am a paladin. Like it's kind of my thing. Like, right. I mean, I can't walk away from it. So you guys can step out if you want. I don't blame you. I'm I'm, I'm gonna ask the abbot. Uh, I, I'm going to tell him the wine's getting to me and uh, needs to come out. And I, is there a latrine somewhere very close? <laughs> Maybe upstairs or downstairs. We had a pot, but we gave it away. Um, a 10 pound pot. Um, any of the latrines are over in the east <laughs> wing. However, many of the Bellevues just use a corner in the courtyard. I. I don't need to do that. I'm 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 a civilized barbarian. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Pull the other one. I pointed the abbot. I pointed the abbot. Say, are you the cause of the consumption? How dare you! No, it's a simple question. No, I am not. I would never take another knife, and in fact, I have cured many illnesses over the years throughout the valley and especially in the village below. How dare you accuse me of something? How, like how, how if you're dare such a positive you? presence, why does the village fear you and have cut off relations? It is not me that they fear. In fact, I do venture into the village from time to time. I know you venture there, but they are very uncomfortable with the Abbey, and they said that they have very little to do with you, and they think this whole place is quite a mess. That is understandable. I think if you have seen the Bellevues already, you can understand why normal people, like the people of the village of Kresik, would find this place to be disturbing. Does that mean I should cast the Bellevues out or kill them as well? Of course not. What did you say, kill them as well? Instead. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. oh no! Can I do an insight to see if that was the, the DM or if that was the abbot? That was the DM. That was the DM. <laughs> okay, I'll okay, okay. I'll tell you that one quickly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and meanwhile, can I can I uh, sidle downstairs? Uh, down into the cellar. <laughs> sure. Um, so uh, as you. Try to. Oh, would you want to take a sneak check? I can't imagine he can sneak. Oh, he's looking for latrines, apparently. Uh, Twenty-five. He's, he's been oh, yeah, I guess he can. Hmm. Okay. Twenty-five. So as as that's happening, you you uh, head downstairs. Um, so the, the staircase is about twenty feet down, and there's a, a cellar down here. It has many barrels of wine, and there's a wooden rack that contains a big yes. chunk of wine barrels. It's a wine cellar. And we've lost them. <laughs> and they've lost the that wine can cellar. I out here for a while. Okay, so everyone else... Can, I, can I inspect the area? Yes, do you want to, to take a perception check? Ooh, natural 20. Wow. Right, we'll, we'll come back to you in a wee while. Um, everyone else, what are you guys doing? I, I really would like to, to to see the ward before we we you know go go to war with the abbey, abbot. <laughs> yes, so would I. Um, but I do so, I do understand Bernard's uh, oh yes 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 moral I do. Um, quandary. Oh, I have those all the time. Yes. So I I, I address the uh, I address the young abbot and I say you are a pa- a powerful being, um, who could work so much good in this entire country. And instead, you walled yourself up here and 
do little. Like this, this. How can you? How do you look into a mirror every single day? Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. So, um, <laughs> I, I thought you were going somewhere else with that line of questioning, and instead, it sounds uh, like you know what's going on on this. I, I, um, I can, um, so look, have look, that, the abbot, abbot responds by saying, "I can understand why humans would take such a small-minded view. You must yes. understand that I am looking at the bigger picture, instead, and therefore justified in harvesting body parts from innocents in yes, order. Instead of trying to avenge one or two small deaths, I am trying to prevent generations of deaths in the future. No, but generations you don't... of people have been taken from their home worlds and brought to this place and." pitted into this terrible conflict with Strahd and, and you could have done something and you didn't. No, no, I could not have done. Strad, killing Strad, trying to kill Strad, is an impossible task. That much is clear to me. Why is it impossible again? I, 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 I'm going to sneak off into the, the wine cellar. I don't think <laughs> I've been in here. Uh, yes, I'm just going to sneak away. Um, yes, I've done it and uh, goodbye. And he, so uh, you said, why is it impossible? And he says, because Strad, he is more than just a man. He is more than just a vampire. Strad is the land of Barovia itself. As long as Barovia, as long as Barovia itself still exists, so will Strad von Sarovich. He cannot be killed, but he can be healed. Okay. Meanwhile, I can't believe uh, that we, we, we ended up into the, in this tale where. <laughs> uh, can I just say how sexist this is? <laughs> what's this? The, <laughs> how is it sexist? <laughs> the, the, the bride? Like, <laughs> like, oh my god! It's like fine. So it's <laughs> the only thing that can heal this complete fucking psychopath. It's the is the love, the of, love a woman. of a woman. Ugh. <laughs> So we have, Whether or not she wants so we to. have the, the main the main villain like stalking these young women who remind him of his lost love instead of going through like the 12 steps of grief and denial and acceptance he's like no 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 i've got to drain irena's blood every night because that's how i get back to my tatiana and then so we're trying to save irena mm -hmm. and so like yeah empower her and all that kind of stuff and then we meet this celestial being in this abbey who's like building a wife for <laughs> it's not great <laughs> it's not a Bernard's upset about it that's yeah 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 no, I just I just you know yeah so so we're going to um this is like the Snape conundrum, isn't it, with Harry Potter, where he's like, oh, just... yeah. he's, he's not actually a bad guy because he's so in love with Lily Evans, uh, or Lily Potter, and, you know, he was always in love with her. He's like, no, he's a fucking creep who was a terrible bully to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's become clear, all we need to do is go to one of those Build-A-Bear shops, just <laughs> cobble together. <laughs> a new wife for Strahd, and boom, we win. I mean, are you? I guess it all depends on whether you are believe that the Abbot's plan is a good plan. No, I do not. Well, I, 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 I will say it's suspicious that the last thing he installs in her is a voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, she started looking really good. I had to put a tongue in her eventually, but I'm not looking forward to it because I'm sure she's going to be like nag, nag, nag. <laughs> We'll okay. take care of table manners first. Yes. It, no, it's, there's plenty of room in the wine cellar. We could just all get drunk down there. Yeah. Uh, I definitely need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Kellen, uh, Kellen, you've come across something. Um, there are many bottles of wine, including um, uh, the old purple grape mash number three from the, the Wizard of Wine's winery. You also come across mm -hmm. a scroll. A scroll. <laughs> With magical it's, properties. In fact, it is a spell scroll, Kellen, that you have managed to find for the spell mm. Hero's Feast. Mm. Um, so if you cast the spell, you bring forth a magnificent feast, including food and drink. It will take one hour to consume, and after an hour, it will disappear. Uh, up to 12 people can partake of this feast. Um, you get a few benefits if you feast. You're cured of all diseases and poison. You become immune to poison and being frightened. Nice. And you make all wisdom saving throws with advantage. 
Um, your hit point maximum also increases by 2d10, and you gain those hit points, and that lasts for 24 hours. That's amazing. Now wait, uh, <laughs> can we say that one more time? <laughs> Google Heroes Feasts. <laughs> Heroes Feast. What are you planning on doing and, with and this scroll? Now wait, how long did it take to cast? Uh, b- 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 um, it took an hour, hour to It consume. actually takes 10 minutes to yeah. cast. Yeah. You gotta put the souffle in the oven. Oh. Are you gonna eat this in the basement or upstairs getting killed? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> hey guys, He's gonna cast it by himself and eat the whole thing. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did you say 2d10? Oh, it's, it's it, well, well, it, uh, I'll just say big time benefits. Yeah, there's, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. a Google Heroes Feast. It's a, it's a uh, spell, it's a um, Dungeon Dragon spell. Six, six, and I assume, six, uh, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I were to read the scroll aloud, it's, it's done. I believe it's Jean will need to uh, mm. use that for you. I, I'm sure I can trust isn't... him with it implicitly, he would yes. never just use it for himself. He would yeah. always look to the good of the group. So, guys, what's the I, plan? We've got Kevin anything in the else cellar. in the. We've got uh, uh, an abbot who has clearly solved the whole thing, um, or <laughs> or <laughs> or do you want to do something else? Um, well, I'm I'm like I'm done. Right. So, Master Sunna <laughs> just like, grabs the hilt of her sword, which oh, I no. presume is still very concerned, and just like marches back out. Okay. Oh, we need to but you're gonna march out, out? The west wing, or we, we never we never yeah. interviewed the ward, or no, exactly. That's where we're going to go now. Oh, the west so wing she's not behind so out out of the the hall with the abbot and you know, yeah. to the west wing. I think he said east, and east. to the east, the east wing. That's right. So I'm, I'm going to stuff a few bottles of the, uh, yes. the good stuff yes. Okay. Yes, yes. inside of my robes. And so at this point. Um, the abbot has headed back uh, to uh, Vasilka, and uh, he now seems to be um, teaching her uh, uh, how to dance. He, he is leading her through the steps. Oh, nice. Dancing. Yes. yes. Lovely. Strad will really appreciate it. Um. <laughs> Especially because she can't talk. <laughs> so um, as, as you leave, he, he says, um, if you wish, as she is on the upper floor, um, I would advise that you head up to the belfry here and then across the battlements there the, that way you will avoid the uh the bell views down below oh. upstairs is where the music is coming from at the moment should we go upstairs yes I, i'll I, i'll head upstairs with the group assuming i okay master son are you, heard you, are you heading up to the, the belfry as well Yes, and I'm like, sorry, I stomp out uh, towards the door, and he says, Oh, you can go upstairs. So I'm just like, Oh, fine. <laughs> stomp. <laughs> okay. Staircase so... and march upstairs. Crit Faced is a weekly Dungeons and Dragons podcast. To make sure you never miss an episode, and to get an exclusive prequel episode of the podcast where you can find out what our characters were up to before this adventure began, head over to CritFacedPodcasts.com and join our Crit Faced fan group. <laughs>